Good morning. Welcome to Stand on the Word. Well, the sun is up and shining and it is going to be a beautiful day in the Lord. All right, today, Psalm 55 through 57, verse 4 of chapter 56, in God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what can flesh do to me. All right, let's start with Psalm 55, where we read of David's response to a betrayal by a close friend. Now, let me just ask you this question. Have you ever been betrayed by a close friend, someone that you trusted? Well, if you have, then I think you can relate to the anguish that we read here coming from David. Now, this passage does not tell us who betrayed David. Some scholars speculate this was when David was driven uh, from Jerusalem by his son, his son Absalom. And uh, David's trusted advisor, Ahithophel, was aiding Absalom. So, unfortunately, betrayal is not uncommon. In fact, it seems to be a common trait latent in man's fallen nature. Therefore, David's psalm not only reminds us that we're not alone when we face betrayal, but it also shows us a proper response. Let's begin in verse 4. My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. <laughs> I just want out of here. I want to escape. You know, I'll tell you what, it's a good thing we don't, it's a good thing we don't have wings because I would be using them a lot. Verse seven, indeed, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. I mean, can you, can you feel David's heart and his emotions here? I mean, this is real. And I, and I think we've probably all been there. You just want to pull the covers up over your head and make it all go away. And here we read of the source of his anguish. Look at verse 12. For it is not an enemy who reproaches me, then I could bear it. Nor is it one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me, then I could hide from him. But it was you, a man of my equal, my companion, and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together, and we walked to the house of God in the throng. Wow, there are certain people we kind of expect betrayal and treachery from, but not those we go to church with. Now, we don't, again, we don't know who it was who betrayed David, but we do know how David feels about them. Look at verse 15. Let death seize them. Let them go down alive into hell, for wickedness is in their dwelling and among them. Now, that's pretty strong language. So, how do we find peace in these storms of life? And trust me, if you've not experienced them, you will. Look at verse 16. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many against me. Isn't that good stuff? Look, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go about helpless. I am going to call upon the Lord morning, noon, and night. It's like the, the widow in, uh, in, in Luke chapter 18 that, uh, that, that Jesus talked about who was relentless in pursuing justice. We need to keep pounding the, the doors of heaven, keep going before the throne of God and seeking the justice, seeking God to move on our behalf. Now take note of the next few verses. Verse 19, God will hear and afflict him, even he who abides from of old. Because they do not change, therefore they do not fear God. He has put forth his hand against those who were at peace with him. And he's talking about the one who betrayed him. He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. In other words, don't watch their lips, watch their hands. All right, here's a great verse as we come to the end of this chapter. Verse 22. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He, listen to this, listen to this, don't miss this. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. All right? Stand. Stand firm on the word of God, on his promises. Now, that's a comforting promise, okay? 
Let's go to verse, uh, or go to Psalm 56. It's another plea for help. That's what I like about the Psalms. They're so real. I mean, all of us have been there or are there, and we can find, um, we can find a Psalm that fits. Now, keep in mind that these Psalms are songs to God. That's what David was doing in times of great distress and discouragement. What was David doing? He was singing to the Lord. Now that's, that's something to take note of. You know, remember back in, in 1 Samuel chapter 30 when all appeared to be lost. David was at Ziglag and they had come in while they were out. The men were out, took off their, all their possessions, their wives, their children, and everything. And David's own men were turning against him. His world was caving in all around him. And what did he do? Well, we read that he strengthened himself in the Lord. And that's what David is doing here. He's not on Facebook with TMI. He's on his face before the Creator, casting his cares upon the one who can move mountains. And he's stirring up his faith so that the hope within him will get stronger and stronger. Verse 1. Be merciful to me, O God, for man would swallow me up. Fighting all day, he opposes me. He, he, he oppresses me, rather. My enemies would hound me all day, for there are many who fight against me, O Most High. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what can flesh do to me. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Now grab a hold of that. Grab a hold of that. When you're afraid about what is happening in the world today, what is happening in your part of that world, those who David says in the next verse, twist his words and are against him, what do we do? We trust in God. Verse 5, all day they twist my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. Man, does that sound familiar. Look what David says next. Right? This is another one. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. None of this is missed by God. Look at verse 8. You number my wanderings. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? Look, God doesn't miss anything that you're going through. Sometimes you feel like you're alone. No one sees it. God sees it. God is actually putting your tears that you cry out to him in a bottle. And he's recording them. Wow. That in and of itself is encouraging. So, where does David then place his, his hope as a result? Look at verse 9. When I cry out to you, then my enemy will turn back. This I know because God is for me. In God, I will praise his word. In the Lord, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? So he repeats that. I don't miss this. I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. Can you say that? Say that with me. I will not fear. What can man do to me? This is a declaration as much as it is a prayer. I will not fear because I am in the hand of God. He is my savior. He is my shield. He is my strength. He is my strong tower. Wow, this is some really good stuff. Verse 57 has a f familiar theme, help. All right, that's what we see this a lot, help. Is David is fleeing Saul, but this prayer for help also praises God. And so we need to do that. You know, we need to praise God in the midst of our crying out to him for help. Why? Because his character reassures us that help is on the way. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you. And in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. I will cry out to God Most High, to God who performs all things for me. Why cry out to God? Well, he shall sin, verse 3, he shall sin from heaven and save me. He reproaches the one who would swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Here's why. He'll save you. Cry out to him. He'll save you. He will send his mercy and his truth. What we can't accomplish, God can by his very nature. All I can say, God, reveal yourself right now. Verse 4, my soul is among lions. I lie among the sons of men who are set on fire, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongues a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. 
They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have dug a pit before me. Into the midst of it, they themselves have fallen. My heart, listen to this, grab a hold of it, hang on to it. My heart is steadfast, oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. Awake, my glory, awake, lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. For your mercy reaches unto the heavens and your truth unto the clouds. Be exalted, O God, among the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. And I say amen and amen. Lord, let it be so in our lives today. Amen. I hope and pray you have a blessed day in the Lord. Hang on to these truths. Declare them in the name of Jesus. Have a great day. Until next time, keep standing on the Word.